Hi everyone, today I'll be doing a quick review of the DJI Mini 3 Pro in relation to people who ride motorbikes. So the reason why I bought a Mini 3 Pro is because of its ability to actively track a subject, such as a person riding a motorbike. However, there are a few small drawbacks which I dislike about the drone, which I'll be covering later. Now before you go out and spend your hard-earned cash on one, there is one major consideration which you need to consider which is what sort of camera angles you're going for. So many times, you might actually be better off using a video camera on a tripod like what I've got here. Whereas drones are really good for taking high shots, shots straight down, and in difficult places where you can't actually put a camera by yourself. Also another good consideration for buying one, good point, is because you don't actually have to go out and grab your tripod anymore, you just set the drone to fly over to a location, and off it goes, wait for it, wait for your subject and then fly it back to yourself. Now another thing to consider when buying a drone is that many of them don't actually have microphones built in. So if you don't plan on making a montage covered in music, you might look at investing in a microphone separately and setting it on a tripod to get those whoosh sound effects as you ride past. What I'll be doing soon is going through a few of the features I really like about the DJI Mini 3 Pro and a few of the features or malfunctions that aren't so great either. The DJI Mini 3 Pro is a compact drone that fits in the palm of your hand, offering some impressive features, but it has its fair share of drawbacks as well. Starting with the positives, the Mini 3 Pro is capable of capturing stunning 4K 60 frame per second footage, which is a major upgrade from its predecessor. It also has the ability to shoot vertically from above for some dramatic angles, as well as shooting vertical angles, making it a great tool for capturing social media content. The auto tracking feature is also a major plus, allowing you to focus on your subject without having to worry about controlling the drone. Now let's take a look at a sample video I recorded recently. Unfortunately, the Mini 3 Pro suffers from some significant downsides. One of the biggest issues is the blur glitch, which can make your footage unusable. However, I suspect this might be fixable in an upcoming firmware update. Additionally, the battery life is limited to just about 20 minutes in the real world, which can be a major inconvenience if you're trying to capture longer shots, or when you need to spend time positioning the drone correctly, not to mention setting up your bike and riding through the scene at the right moment. Furthermore, while the auto tracking feature is a plus, it doesn't always work as well as advertised. During this video, the car was obscured by shrubs and the Mini 3 couldn't trace the vehicle even after coming into vision later. The low airspeed can also be frustrating, especially if you're trying to capture footage in windy conditions. In calm conditions, I found the drone to max out at just under 50 k's an hour. However, with a headwind, the drone was only capable of about 35 kilometers when filming on location. The lack of vertical sensors can be a significant issue as well, as it means the drone can't detect obstacles directly above it, which was an issue when I first ran the tutorial and instantly crashed into a tree above. The DJI Mavic 3 does, however, have vertical sensors on top. Additionally, the sensors don't work when auto-tracking, which can make it difficult to capture the footage you want. The absence of audio is also a major downside as it limits the potential use of the drone. The buttons on top of the controller can't be switched off, which can be a major annoyance, especially when filming yourself recording while riding. The reversed up and down controls for camera angle can also be frustrating for some users and aren't possible to be switched out. In summary, while the DJI Mini 3 Pro has some impressive features, it also has several significant drawbacks that may make it less appealing to some users. The 4K footage and auto tracking features are great, but the blur glitch, short battery life and poor auto tracking performance make it difficult to recommend the drone unless you spend a lot of time creating monologues. So unless your idea of recording is driving really slow like this at 10Ks an hour or on a bicycle, I would avoid getting the... Let's try that again. Unless your idea of being on two wheels is pedaling, I'd just skip all the active focus tracking and go straight to the Mini 2SE.